you started using solid and you're fine with signals and you're understanding how all the logic works and all that. And then you start hearing about nested reactivity and how solid stores are supposed to help you with that and make things better. So let's have a look about that, how that works. Awesome. So as usual, we're right here in the code and I have now two versions of the same thing. One of them uh, has a signal. They're both to do apps and the other one is using a store. So looking at their implementation, they're pretty much the same. Different. One of them has a signal and the other one is going to create a store from those to do's. Then I have the method that's going to toggle them. So then I iterate through my signal and create a list based on the messages of each one of them. For the store, we do pretty much the same thing. We iterate through each one of our to-dos and we have methods to do one or the other. And finally then, once we render, I'm logging in that the signal created the go to gym, the walk to the dog, laugh until I cry and cheat death. So each one of those of my to-do lists get rendered at least once for each one of them, nothing new there. And then we can start uh, playing around and figuring out what are the differences. So first of all, if I go and I mark laugh until I cry as done. Okay, I did that today. I get that laugh until I cry re-rendered. So the element got removed and brought back. Same, if I do the dog and if I do, if I go to the gym. So this is not actually signals being smart enough to not render the whole list. This is because as we saw in the last video, we have a four here and four is smart enough to do that. So if I go to the store, let's clean this up. And you see, I didn't change anything in the code and going to the store, I can, you can see that's pretty much the same thing. Every time I click, I'm going to change the specific to do and I'm going to set it to done. Okay. So now if I go and go to the gym, nothing re-renders. So what's happening here is because of the structure of our data. What happens that in the initial value, I have an array of objects. And each object has the ID, has the message, and has a Boolean if it's completed or not. So now, if I go to my to toggle my to do, what I'm doing is essentially mapping through the array, finding the one that has the ID that I want to do and changing it. And so Solid is not able to do the granular update to each one of them. So if we're using the store, it would be the same thing as creating a signal individually to each one of those this is pseudocode this is not actually how you create a signal but that that's what it happens so because of that each one of these properties is their own individual signal so going down to my toggle to do for the store what's happening is that i'm saying okay so every time uh, I'm going to set the to do. I want to set the to do when the ID is like that. And I want to set the completed key to be the opposite of the previous value. So this means go to that specific one, find that specific key and change that value, which means that I can granularly change it. And this is awesome, right? So this is why we say use stores when you have nested reactivity. What is nested reactivity? Is that you can have reactivity in nested keys inside your data. That's what stores are for. But we can go a step further. So let's say for example that I have more than one workspace in my to-do app. And now as I change the workspace, so I have a set of to-dos for work and a set of to do's for my personal stuff. And then I can click here and go to my other set of to do's. So if I do that on the signals, I'm going to create a new one and boom, everything re-renders. Okay. If I do the store, everything re-renders again. What? 
So let's refresh the page and check this out. The second item is walk the dog. Let's clean the console. And if I change my workspace, it renders again. It cannot be granular again. Why? Because going back, what I'm having on that particular method, I'm getting all my to-dos and I'm erasing them. So I'm preventing solid to do that granular check because I'm taking the whole object, the whole array and replacing with something new. So for that, solid has another method called reconcile that actually comes from solid store. And what reconcile is going to do is going to enable solid to do the granular check. So it's going to do the shallow reference reconciliation. So now, because the second item on my previous workspace is absolutely the same object on my other list and on my first list, reconcile is going to prevent that one from being updated because it's essentially the same. It's going to check one by one. So check it out. Now only where sunscreen gets updated. Yes, science! And this is the most powerful tool you can have when you're handling nested reactivity. Because now I can make sure like whatever big bulk data is coming from my API, if I toss a reconcile there, I'm sure it's only going to do the exact minimum work that's necessary. And with that, I hope you start getting like this mental model of how solid allows you to optimize as much as you can. And the whole point of all these features and helpers and methods around solid is actually to help you achieve the best practices and not really think about the optimizations if you follow the rules and best practices and out of the box, things are gonna be performing. So that's the gist of it. And that's why you use stores for complex types like arrays and objects and I hope it's clear now how to handle the stores. If it's not, let me know in the comments below. Meanwhile, there are some recommendations from YouTube for you and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.